Hi, I've seen Polarity's video recently about recreating the camera crusher distortion. And uh, his approach is uh, pretty different to mine. And uh, I think my approach is going to reproduce the camera crusher almost perfectly. And it's also doable inside of Bitwig. I won't care about the filter because it's just a two pole low pass filter, a resonant two pole low pass filter in front of everything. Um, so you can use that, you can recreate that also in Bitwig and in Alpha Forever, that's not a problem. And the compressor is a strange modified version of the tube distorter in fat mode and in not fat mode it's something uh, that I don't want to understand. But it's not a compressor for sure, none of the settings is a compressor, but that doesn't matter. And uh, I'd set the master to 100% uh, on both the mix and the volume so we can see the distorter working properly and uh, I've built the patch also in Bitwig but I don't have a license so I can't share it but I did some screenshots and I'm gonna share them uh, if you want to recreate the effect inside of the grid um, and uh, yeah the build is going to be similar and what you are going to do is going to be similar that what I'm going to do here and I'm going to explain what I do and why I do it so first let's turn on the distortions we can see that nothing changed we have two signals here and uh, they are overlapping that's why you see only one saw wave and i'm using a saw wave only to see the transfer function of the um, uh, distorter so i'm not looking at the spectrum because that doesn't tell so much on what the non-linearity on what the non-linearity actually actually does to the signal but here we can see it clearly uh, and if i move the max slider then we can see that uh, it's it's scaling the function on one part and after a breakpoint it uh, crossfades it to one so first thing that we are going to look at is the breakpoint and i measured it several times and it's 0.75 and if we invert it then it's negative 0.75 so this distorter is symmetric uh, that means that we can use an absolute function in the start. So whatever we do, we will do it on both sides and flip the uh, the this side after the processing. And for that, we need to calculate the uh, sign of the signal. And I create a designer here. Take the absolute value once again and divide the absolute value by the signal itself. And I'm going to use the first output as the absolute value and the second output as the sign. And it, this is convenient, a convenient thing that we can put things into sub-designers here. So, abs, abs and sign. And if we plug this here and that there, then nothing changes. And if in the end we multiply this signal by the sign, then we have the original signal back. And uh, that is nice because of now whatever we do on the top part, that's going to happen on the lower part as well. And uh, now the next thing we want to do is to find this slope. Because of this is just a volume change and uh, this is depending on the change of the volume. So let's multiply the signal and uh, I'm going to use a crossfader here because of that's going to make things more intuitive. And the crossfader is going to drive, going to be driven by the parameter mech, and it's going to be in between 0 and 1. And the A value is going to be 1 because of the minimum slope of the uh, mech is the input slope, so it doesn't change anything, and the maximum slope is this deep and I know from experience that that's 11 and if we can now crossfade in between the two values and you can see that this slope is matching so this is the slope that we generate and this is going to this set this has the maximum output of the function which is somewhere here or there on the top of the screen and below here um, 
but now we have to check for the uh, function if it if this is higher than 0.75 then we will output the crossfade here as we will just output the modified slope like this and you can see that this is matching so if I take this to 0.5 which is halfway and take this 0.5 to 0 0.5 that's matching if I take this to point something low then we can match things always and you know, we only have to find this function which is going to be pretty easy let me put a cone here so things get a bit more uh, nice on the eye and for that we need to rescale the function which is not hard to do we need this value and it will go there and after we are done with this things are going to work and the minimum input is going to be 0 0.75 which I'm going to call threshold by the way and and the maximum input is going to be 1 uh, not one the input the maximum input is this crossfader uh, which which is in between 1 and 11 currently and the minimum input is one second the threshold and the minimum and the maximum output is actually one i can use that one and we have a matching function i can take this to the maximum take this to the maximum they match i can take this low everything is matching so we have the mech um, distorter and we can cut this part of the patch put it into a process mech node and uh, take the input create the output cut this and call this input mech and we can test this that it's working and indeed it's working that's nice now remove this patch and we are going to build the tube and for that I'm going to take this back because of we are going to build upon the mesh distorter I'm moving things a bit aside So, uh, this is going to be called tube now. And currently it's the same as the mech. And let's turn off the mech here and take a look at the tube. We can see that it once again has a threshold, which is different than we had before. And I know that it's 0 0.6. So I'm going to move this to 0 0.6. I measured it uh, before and already we have a uh, a linear version of this distorter but uh, the maximum slope is different so we take this down and I think it was 5 yeah it was 5 now they match again and half ways they match so this is this simple the only difference is this curve and this is kind of tricky and this is harder to do in the grid but easy to do here just take the cosine of this uh, rescaler the cosine because of we see that this is a curve and at one it's one so a cosine function is a curve and at one it's one so that's why i went with it i don't know if this is what the developers really really used inside of the camera crusher but this kind of uh, does the job and we have a curve but but uh, the speed of the curve is not matching so we have to match the speed and uh, for that we need to calculate, uh, we, we need to transform this cosine function so that here it's going to be 0.6, uh, the threshold value. And uh, we, we need to calculate this output minimum then. And for that, we are going to use the Arcus cosine function. So if we plug in the Arcus cos uh, we plug in 0.6 into the Arcus cosine, it 
should give us a, a value that's 0 0.6 here. But since the cosine is uh, calculating with um, inside the cosine function is calculating with x times uh, 2 pi, we need to divide by 2 pi here. And this is useful because of in audio we mostly uh, drive a cosine or a sine function with a phase accumulator which is between 0 and 1 and we don't have to multiply always by 2 pi. So here we divide by 2 pi in this case and that almost uh, works. As you can see the function is ending at 0 0.6 which is fine but uh, we, we would need this 0.6 and yeah, that, that's something that the cosine function does. It has 2.6 values, we have to choose one and this is the one we get back. But if we subtract this from one, things are getting fine. And uh, basically we have now the tube uh, distorter, except one thing. If I take the tube down here, uh, we can see that the camera crusher is transparent, while our function is creating a bump here. But as soon as I move this knob a little bit, it's getting that bump. And uh, this is just something that the developers did. They are checking for the uh, knob position. So if the knob is lower than a very low value, like, like this, then they send us, they, they, they give us back the original input. If it's higher, then they uh, output the uh, distorter. And this way we are fine. So let's move the tube. And it behaves completely the same. So we can also put these uh, into its own designer. Cut. Create it create a tube designer, call this input x, this output y, and uh, create an input here for the tube parameter, and here we have it, we have both the mesh and the tube. and they work fine. So we can patch this in. And now we have a nice uh, patch with, uh, that works the same as the original did. I don't know why the mech is not changing now. It should. It's patched in. I just don't see it on the scope. I see it when the tube is changing. I don't see it when the mech is changing what happened here. Now I see it. I messed up something here. So the tube comes in. If that's more than... Oh, this is missing. That's the problem. So now they work and uh, we can even give a test. So this is also counterintuitive because in reality mech is the uh, first nonlinearity. But let's set both to half ways and uh, they, they are going to match. Set the mech here. So this is completely the same. And uh, the hard part 
uh, in between in the grid is was was for me that uh, I couldn't find a way to uh, encapsulate patches. Maybe it's possible. I just didn't find a way yet. I'm not too experienced there. And the other thing is that it's lacking trigonometry and uh, mass functions, so there's no arcus cosine. So I had to get this value from here. Um, and there is no uh, cosine, so I had to transform a sine function, but that I'm going to show you now. So this is the mesh uh, patch. And you can see that I do the same things, absolute value, sine function, so it's everything the same. And I'm gonna share this screenshot with you later. Uh, or not later in the in the description and here is the tube distorter which works fine and 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 this was just uh, guessing of on how 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 i can get it to be the same but you can see that we have this bump here and and it looks the same and this start with the phaser it's just my test signal so you can plug in an, an input here and it will work so you can recreate these two distorters perfectly also inside the grid but um, if there is no encapsulating of patches into sub patches or sub designers or whatever you call it then i think this is pretty useless but uh, as far as i remember polarity is using encapsulating and uh, so i assume that it's doable and uh, things are more usable i just don't know how to do it and uh, because of i'm not experienced it in the grid but i hope that this was uh, interesting enough or that this was uh, giving you helpful insights if you are inter interested in this kind of uh, plugins but uh, this is a pretty old plugin and um, if you want to use this this distorter then i think it's easier to use these uh, the nice thing here is that in this patch we could also change the threshold pretty easily so we can add this uh, another parameter and then we have additional functionality and for the mech this is working here so we can do stuff like this that is not possible there and uh, here it also works for the uh, tube so we can create an input for the threshold as well so it, it is going to work and this can create uh, a completely different kind of distortions than the camera crusher was uh, capable of but this is something that uh, i think you won't be able to do in the grid anymore so there you you won't have this possibility because of you don't have this function and uh, trigonometry is pretty hard to do there but but anyways um that's all for today and um, yeah if you like this kind of content then subscribe or leave a comment and uh, yeah you can download this patch from our discord channel anyways and i'm gonna share the screenshots in the description for bitwig and thanks for watching bye bye